central airway collapse, also known as expiratory central airway collapse or tracheobronchomalacia, has a prevalence of about 13% in the general population. Now, if you link that to COPD or asthma, the prevalence may be higher, up to 30 to 40%. The cause of this central airway collapse is uncertain. It has been associated with small airway obstructions like COPD or asthma, and it has also been associated with chronic inflammatory process of the airway, like autoimmune disease or gastroesophageal reflux. It has also been associated with certain traumas after tracheostomy, or even with sleep apnea or obesity. I'm Dr. Sebastian fernandez Lucia. I'm the Director of Interventional Pulmonology here at Mayo Clinic, Florida. Hi, I am Dr. David Abia Trujillo. I'm one of the pulmonary and critical care doctors here in Mayo Clinic, Florida. Our paper title, Central Airway Collapse, an underappreciated cause of respiratory morbidity will be published at Mayo Clinic Procedure on December 2020. And Dr. Avia, let's discuss about the symptoms of this disorder, please. Thank you very much, Dr. fernandez Busi. The symptoms these patients present are very challenging. It's usually shortness of breath, cough. They can present with both. Um, the shortness of breath it's a little bit different than the regular shortness of breath. It tends to be an exertion. However, this patient's shortness of breath is worse when they're lying flat. The cough is also a different cough. Um, it tends to be what patients refer as a barking seal cough. And it also tends to be worse when they're lying flat. It's very important to think uh, uh, about expiratory central airway collapse in patients that for a long time they've been struggling with these symptoms and the physicians haven't been able to figure out why. Uh, those are the settings in which we should think about this as a possible uh, explanation, as a possible cause of their symptoms, or at least the contributing. Shortness of breath and or chronic cough are the most common symptoms, but also it has been associated with recurrent respiratory infections. And this presentation can mimic different type of diseases. So this disorder can mimic, you know, COPD, asthma, or bronchitis. So it's important to uh, do a, a precise diagnosis. And Dr. Rabia, can you please uh, tell us how we can make a diagnosis of this disorder? The most important part of diagnosing these patients, Dr. fernandez Busi, as you know, is the clinical suspicion. Physicians should think about these, should suspect these to try to go and look for it. There are, other, there are certain diagnostic tools that can suggest uh, this, this disease, this condition. And as our review article shows, dynamic chest CT can, it's, it's an it's a important part of this testing. However, the most important or the gold standard diagnosis test is the dynamic bronchoscopy. Dynamic bronchoscopy is a little bit different than a regular bronchoscopy. It's a bronchoscopy performed under moderate sedation. This is very important as patients should be cooperating during the test. They should be able to breathe in, but mainly have a forced expiration when we ask them to breathe in. At that point, we look at six different levels in the airway. And we try to grade the narrowing or the collapse of the central airway. We also see which is the part that is collapsing, if it is the anterior wall, the lateral wall, or the posterior wall. And we grade it based on severity. Anything less than 70% is considered normal. 70 to 80% is considered a mild collapse. 80 to 90% is a moderate collapse. And more than 90 is considered a severe collapse. These differences are really easy to distinguish when we're doing the test. As Dr. Avia mentioned, we use the dynamic chest CT scan as the first approach to diagnose this patient. It's the first screening 
tool that we use that is non-invasive, but we confirmed the diagnosis with a dynamic bronchoscopy. Now, if during the dynamic bronchoscopy we find mild to moderate collapse, then we start treatment with some airway hygiene measures plus positive pressure ventilation like a CPAP or BiPAP while we also treat other potential comorbidities that can give this patient those respiratory symptoms. But if we do find severe collapsibility, then we move to a stent trial. During a stent trial, we place three airway stent most of the time, and one will be in the trachea, one in the left main airway, and the other one in the right main airway. We leave those stents in place for a week, and we evaluate patient symptoms before we place the stent and before we take them out to see if there has been any improvement. If indeed patients experience the improvement while they have the stents in place, then those patients may be candidate for a definite treatment that is a surgical treatment called tracheobronchoplasty. Dr. Avia, is, are there different ways of of uh, doing this type of surgery. Thank you, Dr. Fernandez Busi. Um, here in Mayo Clinic, we perform tracheobronchoplasty with several techniques. There are two main techniques we use. One is an open tracheobronchoplasty, but we also perform a minimally invasive um, technique. It's called robotic tracheobronchoplasty. And that's one of the things that set our center in here in Mayo Clinic, Florida, apart from other centers. Not a lot of the centers are doing these minimally invasive um, surgery. And which surgery we're going to choose, it depends mainly on the surgeon, but also on what would be the best thing for the patient. Here in Mayo Clinic, Florida, we evaluate our patients from a multidisciplinary approach, and we try to tailor the appropriate and the best treatment based on their needs. Indeed, a multidisciplinary approach is what differentiates Mayo Clinic from other centers to treat this disorder. We are a team of different physicians from different subspecialty, including pulmonary physicians, interventional pulmonologists, thoracic surgeons, thoracic radiologists, ENT, and gastroenterologists. All of us will evaluate and decide what's the best approach for each patient with this disorder. And you have to remember that in our institution, the need of the patients come first. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.